boom in Lekki and the rise of Ibeji Lekki Corridor in Lagos. As the new Lagos has occasioned the rise of different real estate companies offering to be the solution to a more transparent and accountable process of buying and selling real estate in Lagos and other areas in Nigeria. But with an apparent lack of a strict regulatory framework to guide their operations in no time, all of these real estate companies have started to create the same problems they were supposed to solve. That is scamming innocent Nigerians. Welcome back to Space and Style. If this is your first time of watching the show, this is where we talk about all things property. My name is Olamide Onifade. Today we are going to be talking about a very topical issue that has belabored the Nigerian property market, especially in Lagos, which is acquiring land from real estate companies. And aside that conversation, on our other segment, we have our interior decorator who will be sharing tips on how to make our DIY decoration to another level. On the property of the week, we're going to showcase a unique property to inspire you to join the real estate ladder. And lastly, on the artisan of the week, we have, as usual, a craftsman who is going to take us through the nitty gritty of his craftsmanship. But before we jump into the conversation, I will be back in a moment. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Before we went on the break, I stated that we are going to be having a conversation on acquiring property from real estate companies. And to discuss this topic with me is no one else than Mrs. Adaku Chibuke or Chinua, who is with us, who was with us last week. She's a legal practitioner and a senior partner at the Priceless Chambers. With over 10 years experience in handling real estate matters, she specializes in investigating and performing comprehensive review of land and time to document in real estate transactions. Thank you for coming again. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> it was fun last week. I had, it was such an insightful discussion and we're taking it to another level. I'm glad you found it insightful. <sighs> the menace of real estate companies. So as I said in my intro, the issue of omunilers, buying from communities and all that posed a big problem, especially for people in diaspora who were looking to buy and invest in Nigeria, but they were either getting scammed by their relatives and all of that. So this, I think that around 2008, 2009, this industry started booming. A lot of real estate companies started springing up and it was you know, supposed to be the stopgap between you know, all those problems we had. But in recent times, it looks like they're even now part of the problem they were supposed to solve. So a couple of weeks back, there was a big real estate company on social media that was in a mess over allocation. A lot of people subscribed to their, um, to their companies and they have not allocated, even some people as much as five, six years. And I'm thinking, is this another scam? So to start with, how do you how do you buy? What's the starting process? How would you advise a potential client to start the negotiation with a real estate company? Okay, thank you for having me here once again. And like you said initially, the rise of the real estate companies was meant to cure the defects with buying from the Omonilis. However, people are beginning to see that we are having issues. Um, so most times what I do with uh, clients or advise clients to do when buying from real estate companies is that if you're buying from Omonilis or if you're buying from real estate companies, what you're buying is the property, the land. First and foremost, ensure you carry out your due diligence. Now for real estate companies, it becomes more. Now for the it's, it's still the same process, whether it's a real estate company or whether it's a family. I right. thought that because you're dealing with a real estate company, the process should have even been cut off. It all should. the due diligence and all that. You should have more peace of mind. Yes, you should. Actually, due diligence, like I say to people, due diligence doesn't necessarily mean that I am not going to buy this property after the search. But it reinforces my confidence in buying something. And it, gives me, it makes me have an informed decision about what I want to buy. 
buy. So what are the due diligence I need to do when I want to buy with a real estate company? One, I must, I must ensure that the land I am buying from the real estate company is actually free from encumbrance. How? It's not under government acquisition. I must also see that there is a point of contract or an agreement or a deed between them and the landowning families. Hmm. I must also request for if it's a property, like if it's already a built up property, I'll request for your docu um, not just your documents of title, but your approved um, building plans. Now, all this gives me peace that, okay, I'm dealing with people, that's document wise concerning the property. It gives me peace that, okay, I'm dealing with people who understand their onions. Then, on the flip side, I want to hear what is in the grapevine about this real estate company. Mm, that's very important. What are people saying about them? Then sometimes you get to see new people who are springing up. I want to know the face. You get to see real estate companies that are springing up. I want to know the face behind it. So the searches you want to do are the CAC search, which this company. Mm. And who, are they registered? Are, are they registered? Which is behind the company. So you want to find out, are they registered with CAC? Because, mind you, quite a number of them who are also registered with CAC. I was going to say that. So it's not just the fact that are they registered. You're but the starting point should be that you must understand that they're incorporated. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to know if they're incorporated. You want to know what the grapevine, the reviews are saying about them. Then good enough for legal shams. The new law, the last, the last rare law that has been put in place to regulate activities of practitioners in this industry. So the law has been put in place to regulate the transactions and how people carry out transactions. So if you're a real estate company that is selling to people, you must be registered with Las Rera. Hmm. So it becomes a regulatory authority government. Okay, so what you're saying in essence is as a potential buyer, you must ensure that the real estate company you're dealing with is registered with Lazera. However, look at the case I just told you about. A big, a recognized, a renowned real estate company failed to allocate to people that subscribe over five years. What has Lazera to have to do about that? You're going to do, there, there's, the, there's the dispute resolution aspect of that. So you get to make your complaint to Lashira and mm. inform them that this has happened. This happened, it seems they are oversubscribed and they have not given me the, uh, my allocation and my plots and all that. You make such complaints. So right now, those laws are in place in Lagos for you to seek redress when you have such issues. However, on the other side of it, so you want to hear what the news, that's aside from the Rastrera, you want to hear what the news about this real estate company is. Now, one of the reasons why some real estate companies haven't even allocated properties is because some of them don't even know what they are buying from the um, supposedly land-owning families. So some of them are already buying a government-acquired land under the name of the decision <coughs> process. Okay, hold your thought. We need to go on a short break. I really like that area that you went to, the issue of title. When we come back, we're going to talk about it. Please stay with us. We'll do for a short break. We'll be back. Welcome back, everybody. And you're still watching Space and Style. Adaku Chibuike Ochinwa is <laughs> still with us discussing how to buy properties from real estate companies. So before we went on the break, you were talking about title. Yes. Okay, so you need to know if this person has the title to give to me. So sometimes, which is why I said, despite if you're buying from the homonilers or you're buying from a real estate company, you need to also be sure about the integrity of the property you want to purchase. So if I'm buying a land, I want to go and carry out a search. I have to carry this out search with the land, with lands. I have to bring in my professionals in real estate to do this for me. They have to carry out a search. They have to understand the agreement, the the deed, whatever between the, between the, company the real estate company and your money and list that they bought that from. They bought from. So you need to understand that. So you're carrying out your search. You want to be sure that the land they're selling to you is free from government acquisition. So a number of them get to buy properties that they believe is excision in process. And this is a big gamble most times. 
When I see anything excision in process, I advise my client, run. Run. But I think that is a topic on its own. Yes. We need to discuss that. Yes, mm -hmm. That's, that would be on the understanding title. So here, where I'm, where I'm going is, it's 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 a it's a very it's a very high risk investment in essence the land doesn't belong to you it still belongs to the government so how do you allocate the land to people how do you give what you don't have you don't exactly so you can't give what you don't have that's one side then the part of oversubscribing a particular now where the land is not under government acquisition all the due diligence stuff has been done oversubscribing, that is the part that tends into um, fraudulent activities. And that's where La Shrera comes in to assist legations, get back their monies from those people. Then even aside from that, you can also sue for fraudulent misrepresentation to collect your monies back. And what I would always advise clients, go for physical inspection of whatever you want to invest in. Go and see it yourself. Know that it is available. If you're outside the country, get a trusted real estate professional. Now you know Not that a family member. And a family member if you want to, but you must also get a third party whose opinion is not um, emotionally tied to your purchase. So you want to get your professionals, you want to get your lawyers to look into that transaction. And mind you, very sound real estate lawyers. You must get them to look into that transaction, have conversations with the real estate companies you want to. What are the with. questions you should be asking them? Like I said, what are the title? What's the title they have over the land? What is the title they have over the land? Is it registered? If the title is not registered, is in the process of being registered? What are the documents that will be given to you? Yes. Another thing you must also request for when you're um, paying them because most times i know they offer this um payment plan options they sometimes 50 percent off do you get buy one get one free do you get that they now offer mm. you a payment plan option which is one of the reasons why i think people always lean towards buying real estate from real estate companies because they give you the opportunity to pay for a land one two three four times and once they you see such um deals um, deals you need to understand what the contract of sale is saying. So you need to get your own lawyer. So most times these real estate companies also provide services like um, deed of assignments and contract of sale. But you need an independent eyes to review it and explain the terms that are in that contract of sale for you. So sometimes their contract of sale has it that if you're going to withdraw from the deal, you're going to lose about 40% of mm -hmm. the money you paid in. And but sometimes you get to pay before they even show you your contract of sale. That's the thing. So you need to start learning to demand ahead. Or even after you've made your first installment payment. For me, most times for clients, I demand ahead before we make payments. So if the real estate company is not interested in... Um, so another challenge is because we have this... Um, people need to be educated about their rights in real estate whether you like it or not, because we have a lot of, ah, my friend bought and there was no problem, so why will I have a problem? So most times, I even have clients who are like, I'm not going to sign this. My lawyer said I shouldn't sign it. And they're like, why are you not signing? Everybody's signing. So you must know that. And, and most times, another thing people run away from is paying for legal services. And this often puts them into the dare need of facing this fallout they have with the real estate companies because they feel it's quite expensive paying for real estate um, legal services it gets them into these issues so i'm looking over your, your 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 my lawyer my lawyer is calling you oh my client is interested in this property what are your contracts of say what are the documents of title you have on this land before i he can go ahead to make payments so they know that this person is a serious client mm. but most times because we don't want to make that extra fees for legal services we go ahead with the services of these real estate companies. Um, Adaku, unfortunately, we're out of time, okay. but I think we have to take this conversation again. But quickly, to wrap up, how do you ensure that when you pay, you, you are allocated what you, your, your plot immediately? How do you do that? Okay, so most times that happens when there's outright payment, and these conversations should happen before money is exchanged. Mm. You must have these conversations with them you must make it 
legal, like you must have it written down. You can get your lawyers to write to them, okay, so my client is paying this, 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 when will it be allocated? And have them respond to you in writing. And mm. where this is not done, you know that's already a breach of contract. Okay. And so that's a red flag that you're not dealing with the right company. Exactly. And you, Thank you very impossible. much, Adaku. And as I said, we need to another session where we have to discuss understanding titles. And I hope you'll come again and discuss this. I look forward to it. I really it. enjoyed the conversation and I hope people also did. So we have come to the end of the segment and I believe that you have gained more knowledge and insight on what to do when you're dealing with real estate companies and avoid being victims of fraudulent conversations, I'm sorry, transactions. And this takes us to the next segment of the show. So let's hear what our decorator is talking to us about this week. My name is Dr. Maureen Kebasharu, CEO and Creative Director at Deria Options Limited, an interior design firm. So today we're going to talk about how to make a space look luxurious and without breaking a bank. All right, so um, I guess today we're going to talk about just tips, tips, tips on how to do that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the use of colors. So what are the luxurious colors? So we're going to, we're going to talk about colors like white, gray, and most importantly, metallic colors. Bronze, gold, silvers, copper, um, and all that. So usually when you're going to combine these colors together, you're going to do it in a ratio two to one. So you're going to use like the grays, the white, the blacks, the brown, and you're going to put in um, like one metallic color, like a gold, or you're going to use like a silver. So another thing you can do to get that feel is to ensure that your space is totally clutter free. Right. So like that, we try to put in a lot of shelves that are very decorative and stylish shelves, you know, in spaces and we use natural materials. The use of natural materials in a space makes it look luxurious. So let's take a feature wall, for example, you can put stone on a feature wall or you can do um, like wood, like a wooden panel on a wall, on a feature wall or on any other wall for that matter. So the use of natural materials like stones, like wood, you know, gives you that luxury feel that you want. Um, also, another thing you can do to get that luxurious feel in a space is the use of the right lighting. So we want to focus on ensuring you, you create the sense of space. So you don't want too much walls in your space. You don't want too much furniture in a space that you want to give that feel of luxury. So you want to, or you, or you want to use a chandelier that is very dramatic. So use a beautiful, dramatic chandelier. So it can be maybe the one item that you're going to spend a little bit on, you know, then the pieces that you're going to put around, maybe the artifacts, and the um, accessories that you're going to put around the golds and the silvers, the butterflies, like metallic butterflies, you want to put in your recess walls and you want to put a light to focus on it, you know. And um, also, another important thing to do in a space to make it feel like a million dollars is actually the use of the right materials. So if you look at your furniture, for example, you want to use materials that are soft you know, to the skin. So we use suede materials, you want to use velvet materials, you want to use like 100% cotton materials in your space on furniture. And also you want to use furniture that are very easy to keep clean. You don't want furniture that will gather dust over time because when you have furniture like that in your space over time, it makes the space look kind of tacky. So you want furniture that has surfaces that are very easy to clean in your space. Um, so today, let me give you the tip to take away Way. So your space, if you want to make it feel like a million dollar space, just change those throw pillows and you can use a color like here we've got blues and we've got gold in it that is leather, you know, that gives a sense of luxury. And also you can have a really beautiful artwork, you know, that looks expensive on your wall and you put an accent light over it. So I hope you've been able to learn one or two things today. See you again next week. Bye.
Welcome back to the last segment of the show, The Artisan Spot, where we discuss with a highly skilled workman on the intricacies of his craftsmanship. Uh, I started this carpentry business after I've been trained locally and uh, and I also went for I also went for technical knowledge of it. Uh, when I was with my Oga, I started the training in 1987 precisely, and I finished by 1990. I still went to Technica for between 1990 to 1992. After 1992, I started this work at uh, Oribo, Oribo side, Osun State. I started with uh, building of our local government by then, Oranya and North. So, with one of the companies by then, after that one, I came to Lagos, around 1993, 94. Ah, well, as a poor born by poor parents, I don't have any option. Because after my secondary school, I intended to go further. But due to lack of fund, I have to embark on this one. And uh, it's because of uh, my background. That's why I learned this work. Uh, our role on consortium are so many. Number one, we have to do the, the phone work. We have to start the phone work again. We have to do the phone work. We have to stand the column if there is column there. We have to do the German floor. And uh, after the German floor, then if there is decking, linted, after linted, then we do roof and uh, so many other things uh, where we are talking about construction. And uh, it's not limited to building alone. You can also still do furniture in the house. You can construct a bridge or drainage or any other thing that are related to carpentry. Sir. It's my profession. A good carpenter must be at least half a elementary education level if you want to be a good carpenter because when we are talking about carpentry work, it's also regard uh, some calculation. And if you don't know anything about education, you can't calculate well. That's why you see so many carpenters, they can't work well because their level of uh, learning or let me say the experience is so low. If you want to be a good carpenter, at least for now, you must be a, a school start living student before you can become a very good carpenter. And uh, it's also regard, because now at this now, by the time we started our home around 90, nothing like a cutting machine or, or drilling machine or any other thing that we are using now, we mainly use hand by then. Because early can you see anywhere you can find machine. But now we have sewing machine, planing machine, cutting machine, and any other thing that you can talk of that is so available to make the work more easier than where we started by 1990. Ah, number one, what more be physically fit if you want to do carpentry? A sickler cannot do this work because he regard energy. And any word that regard energy, a physical person need to do it. So if you want to be a good carpenter, you have to be fit. Ah, there are many challenges. Oh. <laughs> if I'm going to go with my own experience, there are many challenges. At times, uh, if you are not, uh, if you don't do the work properly, it can bring challenges. If you work with a dubious person that will not pay you your right money or your, your agree amount before you started the work, that's another challenge. But the most challenge is that yeah, in terms of fund, because if you want to establish this work very well, you want to do carpentry work, and you want to establish it, it regards a lot of money. You have to buy some machine, 
some equipment before you can start it. But this one we are doing now is just a locally work, just to find what you are going to eat. But if you want to establish full carpentry work, yeah, to say you will consult door, you will consult a uh, uh, linter, you will consult this, you will consult that, it requires a lot of money. So you can say fund is one of the challenges. Ah, so far I don't have money to buy all those equipment. I am enjoying this site work now. They call me for uh, limited. I will come and do that one for them. They call me for standing column. I will come and do that one for them. They call me for slabbing or decking. I come to do it for them. Or they call me for roofing or any repairs or drilling construction. I say it's a lucrative job. It brings money. It's a lucrative job. It brings money. If you are so faithful to the world, it's bringing money. <laughs> because by the grace of God, I build out, buy cars, so it's a lucrative job. We have come to the end of the show this week, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I did. I am Olamide Unifade, and thank you so much for watching. Until I see you again next week, this is Face and Style.